Good day everyone, this is Miss Anna, welcomes you again to our virtual language arts class. You know, in this day and age, when we're texting and we're emailing our friends, we're not really conscious of proper grammar, proper punctuation. But those things are important because one of these days, you'll need it. We need it in formal writing. And you're especially going to need it when you start communicating to future employers. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how do we avoid common errors in capitalization, punctuation, and spelling in writing. And here are this week's lesson goals. Correctly capitalize when using quotations. Use ellipses before, in the middle of, and after a quotation to indicate an omission. Place commas correctly and recognize and distinguish between common spelling errors. Let's take a look at the words to know. Quotation, non-restrictive modifier, ellipses, and format. You've just seen the goals and vocabulary and you're going to use those in order to answer the lesson question how do you avoid common errors in capitalization, punctuation, and spelling in writing? Well, capitalization, punctuation, and spelling are called mechanics. The mechanics of writing are what make it go smoothly if done correctly. It's important to know how to use punctuation correctly or your writing could be easily misunderstood. It might even get a few laughs. Let's take a look at these sentences. Both sentences here could be completely true and valid, but your reader may think something very different, depending on how you punctuate the sentence. For example, in the fable, Little Red Riding Hood, the first sentence is something that the big bad wolf might have said, let's eat grandma. But in the second example, Let's eat, Grandma. By placing the comma, we have a totally different meaning than we do in the first version. This is something that Little Red Riding Hood might say to her grandma, and I'm sure it's one that grandma would prefer as opposed to the first version. Now then, you'll learn how to correctly punctuate to avoid confusion. One aspect of mechanics you will be learning about are quotation marks used to show someone else's words. Now, you will begin learning about how to identify common capitalization and punctuation errors in quotations and how to shorten long quotations. Quotations are an important part of writing and you need to punctuate quotations to show the words are not your own to give credit to the speaker or writer, and to avoid plagiarism. Let's take a look at this example. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Now, this quotation is about being determined, and it was written by Mark Twain. And we know it is a quotation because it is inside of these quotation marks. And it would be wrong to use Mark Twain's words without giving him credit. Now, let's look at the purpose of quotations before you learn how to punctuate them. A quotation is a phrase, sentence, or passage that a writer takes from another source and uses in his or her own writing. A quotation can be used to make an argument stronger to give an example, to connect writing to a historical context, and to add interesting and entertaining information. Now, quotations can be taken from printed sources, such as books and magazines, or from oral sources, such as speeches and recordings. You probably see many quotations every day. Let's talk about properly formatting quotations. 
to format something means to arrange it in a certain way. We put a comma or period at the end of a quotation inside the quotation marks. And then you need to capitalize. Capitalize that first word of a complete sentence in a quotation. And then you need to introduce a full sentence quotation with a phrase followed by a comma. And notice I said full sentence quotation. Now let's see if they properly formatted this example. As Oscar Wilde, the famous playwright, says, some cause happiness wherever they go, others whenever they go. So first of all, I see that my period is placed inside the quotation marks. So that's right. And then here is my introductory phrase and it's followed by a comma. So that's right. And then some is capitalized, the first word of my code. And so that is correct. And then we have it set off our quotation marks. So this is correctly formatted. So now let's look at other examples. This is incorrect. Let's see if we can spot why. Mark Twain puts its best when he says, it's not the size of the dog, in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Well, here is my introductory phrase to my coat. There is my comma. That's right. What's that period doing outside of the quotation marks? It needs to be inside. What about this example? The critic agreed saying the movie was boring badly acted and not worth the money. I bet you spotted it right away. That period needs to go inside the quotation marks. Now then, my commas also need to go inside of my quotation as well. But why didn't I capitalize this? Because this is not a complete sentence. I am merely pulling out of the text words that the critic used to describe the movie. And I want to show that those are the critic's words. So it doesn't need, need to be capitalized. I also don't need that comma after what's. Because this is not a complete sentence. This is not exactly what that critic said about the movie. Therefore, I don't need that comma to introduce these quotes. I merely need to show that these were quoted in the original work by that critic. Let's look at capitalization errors in a quotation. First, let's look at those that are incorrect. In the 1900s, capitalism experienced an unprecedented growth. Why don't I capitalize unprecedented? Because it is not a complete sentence, so it doesn't need to be capitalized. What about here in this example? The researcher explained that baseball was a segregated sport in 1945. Well, I've integrated that code within my sentence so it needs to be it grammatically so that looks odd doesn't it to capitalize baseball so we lowercase it but we still are coding so we need to use our quotation marks what about this example the researcher explained the Brooklyn Dodgers signed Jackie Robinson for the 1947 season. Well, in this case, do you capitalize it? Why? Because I have an introductory phrase. There is my comma. So I would want to capitalize how the first word in that quotation. So it should look like this. 
sometimes we see a long quotation and we'd love to use it in our paper. But we don't need all of that quotation. We only need a part of it. So let me show you how to properly shorten that quotation for your paper. We would use ellipses, which are marks that show the words had been left out. Now, the singular of that is ellipsis, which you spell with the I. And those are the three points that you see indicated in a text. Let's look at this long quotation and then shorten it. Abraham Lincoln once said, Upon the subject of education, not presuming to dictate any plan or system respecting it, I can only say that I view it as the most important subject which we as people can be engaged in. Great quote, but I don't need all of it. So how do I shorten it? I have to indicate which words I'm deleting with my ellipsis points. So I'm taking out, not presuming, to dictate any plan or system respecting it. So I'll delete those out and I put my ellipsis points in and I have a proper shortened quotation. What about this example? Again, I'm indicating which words I left out. And I'm, in, I'm ending my quotation here after subject. And I close it with my quotation marks. Now, how do we place commas correctly in quotations? Well, a comma comes after an introduction to a quotation that is a complete sentence. Let's look at this example and review this rule that we talked about previously. It was Mark Twain who stated, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Well, recognize here we have our introductory phrase to our quotation and it's set off there with a comma. Now then, also, I want you to recognize that there is a natural break before that quotation. It was Mark Twain who stated, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Did you hear that natural pause? You need to look for those because oftentimes those are an indication that you need a comma. Let's look here where a comma is not needed when introducing a phrase. Our English teacher is quick to point out there is much humor behind what Twain says. That sounds funny, so there is no point to add a comma in this second example. 